The Witch's Tale. The fascinations of the eerie, weird, blood-chilling tales told by old Nancy, the Witch of Salem, and Satan, her wise black cat. They are waiting, waiting for you. Now. <laughs> Another and twenty-two year old I be today. Yes, sir. A hundred and twenty-two year old. <laughs> well, Satan, tell everyone to douse their light. We want lots of darkness when we tell our bedtime stories. <laughs> now, draw up to the fire and gaze into the embers. Gaze into them deep. And soon, by the light of the moon and the stars, you'll see a barren stretch of land where two roads meet in old Massachusetts State. Three policemen stand a talking there beside their motorcycle bikes. And soon you'll hear the story. Of the haunted crossroads. <laughs> the haunted crossroads. <laughs> sure you're not scared to have us lady here alone, Tom? <laughs> of course he's scared, Sergeant. <laughs> Look at his knee shaking. <laughs> I'll probably yell for help the minute you guys get out of his sight. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Jim. I don't think he is properly frightened. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Well, if he sees any spooks, he can't say we haven't warned him. <laughs> Seriously, boy, you'll keep your eyes peeled for other things and ghosts on this patrol. You bet I will, Uncle Pat. And I owe it my luck to have the skunk who knocked up Smith and Barclay here start something with me. <laughs> well, I hardly think that'll happen. Those killings weren't done by the same man. They were both stabbed in the back for the same way. Oh, well, that doesn't prove anything. Several fellows were stabbed to death here right after the Civil War. And another about 20 years ago, according to all records. It wasn't the same murderer who got them and two cops of our troop. <laughs> well, unless you believe the crazy stories about this place being haunted. Well, I must be riding back to troop headquarters with Captain Elton Riskin in the height of it. And you, Gina Harvey, you better be after getting on your patrol. Well, I'll get the old bike moving. Oh, uh, when you get home in the morning, Tom, remind your sister she's got a movie date with me tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen's not apt to forget any date she has with you. True, but Hardy, your job at the moment is to keep your eye peeled for speeders and reckless drivers. <laughs> well, I'll try to remember that, Sarge. Well, good night. Good night, Gene. Good night, Kathleen, oh, together, Sarge. Oh, you know what I thought of, Tom. But we're cops. Listen, you were back here before I did. You must have seen I him. I saw no more than you see now. Whoever did it got away. Take, take it got easy. Away. Take it easy. Tom wasn't alone here more than a minute. No one could have gotten to him across these open fields and then away again between the time I left and come back. Yet I saw no one but him and you. <laughs> what was that? A woman's laugh. A woman's laugh. You hear it too? It sounded here, beside me. Right here, beside it, at, at me very elbow. Yet no one's here, but we can see. <laughs> An invisible woman. That's the craziest part of your whole crazy story. But we did hear it, Captain Elton. True, so it hit me. But there wasn't any woman, by your own confession. You said you searched and couldn't find her. We looked everywhere around, sir. But there's no place there for anyone to hide. And like the hicks around here, you come to the conclusion those old crossroads are haunted. 
A female ghost there, Tom Fallon, with a very ungodly steel knife, I suppose. Which she carried away with her because you couldn't find it either. That's a fine way for two policemen to explain a murder. They're only telling you what really happened. But it couldn't have happened. Just the same it did. Now look here, sir. Tom Fallon was my closest friend. I'm engaged to marry his sister. And Sergeant McGee here is his uncle. You don't think we'd lie to you when Tom's dead body lies out there in the squad room? He was like me on son. Uh, here, Sergeant Pat. Sit down. I'm sorry I have to pound at you like this. But Tom is the second of the two that has been killed inside a week. At the same place. In the same way. And last year we found Barkley dead there. Three policemen stabbed to death and we haven't a single lead to the rat who did it. You think the same person killed them all, sir? Yes. And that person's a man. Not a laughing, invisible woman. A man with strength enough to kill with a single blow. Hardy. You say, Fallon, wasn't out of your sight for more than a few minutes before you heard him scream? Well, I'd only passed the first turn south of the crossroads, sir. A minute and a half at most. And you got back to him in about half that time. How about you, Sergeant McGee? I... I let Tom right after Trooper Halley rode away, sir, and headed north. Mm. And neither of you saw any vehicles approaching from the east or west, nor past any? No, sir. There was no traffic at all. Then, in the 70 or 80 seconds that Fallon was alone, someone ran across that completely open space drove a knife into Tom Fallon's back, and then ran away again. Oh, it's crazy, but that's the way it must have happened. It's the only way it could have happened. It didn't happen! It's impossible! The world's greatest sprinter couldn't have covered the necessary distance in that short time, and a running man must make a little noise, yet Fallon saw and heard nothing until a knife was in his back. You're lying to me, both of you. By the Lord, if I didn't know how close you were to the boy, I'd say you bumped him off yourself. Captain L. Don't say that. Don't. Boy. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean that, of course. But unless you fellas change your story, the coroner's jury is going to ask some mighty embarrassing questions. You've established yourselves as the only persons in the vicinity who could have come close enough to Fallon. No one's going to think we had anything to do with this when they recollect those other killings at the crossroads, even if they won't believe we heard that woman laugh. You've forgotten, Captain, that Tom is the third to die out there by the same man's hand, you say. Last week when Smith was killed... Sergeant McGee and I were on duty with you in this station from the time Smith left here until his body was found. And when Barclay got here a year ago... Then, George, you and I were up in Maine for us to, to doing some fishing. Don't you remember? And Jean here. And I was serving a motorcycle escort for the governor. Now, no one will question that alibi. Yeah, you're right. But if you've told me the truth about tonight, what's the answer? I didn't have to listen to such a nutty yarn about Smith's and Barclay's murders, for no one was near them when it happened. They've been dead for hours when found. Oh, excuse me, boys, the things I've said. If I don't find someone to pin these stabbings on pretty soon, I'll be believing those damn crossroads are haunted. That's all. Just a minute. Tom? Miss Fallon, Mr. Sir. Bring her in. Yes, sir. Does she know her brother is... No. I telephoned her to come down here. That's all. You'd better like the news, Pat. You're her uncle. No, no, not me. I, I can't even see her now. Uh, let me out this other door before she... Why, oh, yes, here she is. Captain Nelson, why did you telephone me to come down here? Mm. Uncle Pat, why are you here? What's wrong? Let me out of here. Let me out. Oh, uncle Pat, it's Tom. Something's happened to Tom. George, look at me. I don't know anything about it. Kathleen, dear. Miss Fallon. Tom was posted at the crossroads tonight. He's been killed there, like the others. Yes. Your brother is... <laughs> Oh, Tom. Kathleen. Let me out of here, or let me out. Oh, I can't bear to hear a cry like that. I can't bear to have her eyes upon me. She has eyes like Tom, and they accuse me. They accuse me. Accuse me? For God, I swear I didn't mean to kill him. Sergeant. You? Yes, I killed him. I, I didn't tell you the truth. I never left him at his post at Tom. I killed a boy I love because something from the blackest hell got into me. I stabbed a knife into his back because I couldn't help myself. I was made to do it, made to do it. No, I'll pay for what I've done. Don't let him get his gun. <laughs> he shot himself. Uncle Pat. He's dead. Tom Fallon's murderer has just killed himself. He stabbed my brother. Oh, no, no, he couldn't. You heard what he said, Miss Fallon. But who killed Smith and Barclay? McGee couldn't have done that. No. Why did he say he couldn't help himself? That he was made to kill his nephew. And what was the meaning of that woman's laugh I heard? 
I'm glad to know you're being so careful here. Why drive away out here at this hour, honey? Oh, I couldn't sleep knowing you were posted alone at these crossroads tonight. Dear, I told you not to worry. A troop has been posted alone here every night for three weeks now, ever since poor Tom was killed. And nothing's happened. You think there's no danger here anymore, now that Uncle Pat's dead? Look, you mustn't stop thinking about him now. Well, it's rather difficult not to think about him. I'll never understand he why... He was out of his mind. That's the only explanation. But what drove him out of his mind? What could have made him destroy someone he loved? As we know, he loved Tom. And he said he was made to do it. Oh, I don't know. Dean, you're all I have left. If anything should happen to you now... Oh, I... nothing's going to hurt me, dear. Come on, get a hold of yourself, sweetheart. But Uncle Pat had nothing to do with the other deaths here. He was miles away when Smith and Barclay were stabbed. Dean, maybe this place is haunted. Oh, you don't believe that stuff any more than I do. You're just all upset and... Now, here, I'm going to disobey all standing orders of the state police... And join you in this car for a little roadside parking. <laughs> oh, no, don't get in. I'd rather get out and walk a bit. Mm -hmm. I've never been out here before, you know. At night, I mean. Yeah, and you shouldn't be here now. Fine thing, driving this deserted old road at midnight. Have you got that little gun I gave you? Oh, yes, I always carry it when I drive alone. Ah, that's good. Well, come on, then, if you want to walk. Gee, exactly where did you find Tom's body and Uncle Pat kneeling beside us? We're not going to talk any more about that. Oh, all right. It really wouldn't do me any good to know. Such a gloomy spot here. No car parking, no road lamps. Eh, these are just old county roads. No state trooper had to patrol here regularly until the... Uh... Until after Frank Barclay was found stabbed here. Oh, Kathleen. I want to talk about it, Jean. I loved Uncle Pat. He was a good man, not a killer or a maniac. And I've got to find out what made him do the thing he did. Find out what made him say he couldn't help himself. Uncle Pat was in Maine when Frank Barclay was killed. Tell me about that. Well, all I know is that Barclay didn't report on schedule. When they found him, he'd been dead for several hours. And then Smith, just a week before Tom. Like Barclay, he'd been dead for a long time when found. But Uncle Pat couldn't have done it. Oh, he wasn't out of my sight, and out of a dozen others at any time that night. Well, after that, Captain Elton made this a fixed post. Oh, I can't understand it. Mm, neither can anyone else. And 70 years ago, the papers say, a Tom constable was stabbed here... And another constable about the time you were children. That makes five. All police. Ah, uh, screwy, all right. But you mustn't think about it anymore, dear. And look, don't worry about me. Look around here. There's nothing but open spaces, sand and grass, and two level hard dirt roads. Why, there isn't a bush or stone big enough for a cat to hide behind, let alone a man with a knife. No one could come close to you here, except someone you knew and trusted. As Uncle Pat was trusted by Tom. As you trust me. <laughs> Eh, that's enough nonsense now. Go home, go to bed, and sleep. Yes, and keep that little automatic of yours handy on the way. Night driving's no business for a woman. I wish you'd let me stay. Not a chance. <laughs> you want me to lose my job? That's what happens to cops who entertain ladies during business hours. But it's so gloomy here. So silent and eerie. It, it looks like a haunted place. Oh, bunk. <laughs> here, give me a kiss and say goodnight. Oh, dear. I can't lose you. You're not going to. I'm safer here than I'd be in a church. <laughs> what was that? A woman laughing. That's what I heard the other night. Look there. A woman's in the road. She wasn't there a moment ago. How did... I'll soon find out. Jean, come back here. Just stay in the car, Kathleen. You in the black dress. I want to talk to you. No, don't follow her, Jean. Come back. Wait, I tell you, whoever you are, don't walk away from me. I'm an officer. Don't go any closer to her. Don't. Oh, there, Captain Jean. Keep away. She disappeared. She vanished as I watched her. Where is she going to? Come back here, Jean. Come back. Come back. I'm coming. What happened to that woman? I'm coming. Jean, what happened to you? I've got to do it. Why do you stare at me like that? I've got to do it. Got to do it. Why are you opening that pocket knife? I can't help myself. Can't help oh. myself. You look as though you didn't know me. As though I'm someone you hate. Jean, I'm Kathleen. You love me. Kathleen. Love. Don't come any closer. Keep away. Kathleen. Love. You're done, Kathleen. 
Shoot me before I reach you. Shoot me. It's the only way to stop me, but I, I can't help myself. No, no. Just yes, shoot me or I'll kill you with this knife. Oh, you're mad. Shoot. Shoot, I say, before I drive this knife into your back. Oh, may God forgive me. It's the only way. I... Oh. Dr. King, I'm sorry. <laughs> This woman who laughed. This ghost. Oh, please. Please don't ask me any more questions now. I'll go out to that operating room again, Captain Elsie. Make sure that Gene's going to live. I only taught him to stop him. Mm, you stopped him, all right. Oh, here's a doctor at last. Oh, doctor. It's all right, Miss Fallon. We've taken the bullet out of Cooper Hardy's shoulder, and he'll be up and around again in just a few days. Oh, thank God. Thank God. And also Gene's tough constitution. Now, let's hope your mind. Will you please tell me exactly what happened at the crossroads tonight? I'll answer all your questions now. What I've already heard has been uh, made me very curious. Sit down, Doc. It's your office and your hospital. Go ahead, Miss Fallon. Let's hear all about that laughing, appearing, and disappearing woman. If I were you, Captain, I'd uh, withhold my judgment a while. The Trooper Hardy has been babbling about the phantom woman under the ether. Under the ether, people don't uh, lie. He's been repeating over and over that he couldn't help himself. He couldn't. Some way... Somehow she made him want to kill me. But he loved me. That love was stronger than her power. He had time to warn me. So you obligingly shot him? Yes. Then the woman reappeared again. Just beside me. And she laughed. She laughed horribly. And then, as I looked at her, she just wasn't there. A woman uh, dressed in black, you say? Yes. A dress all folds that might have been a, a shroud. And a face was like, like the dead. But with an awful purplish tinge as if she'd been strangled. And around her throat, there was a heavy rope that dangled to the ground. Oh, God, I'll see it on the day I die. I don't believe in ghosts. You just shot one of my troopers. I don't care if you were engaged to marry him. I That's don't... That's enough, Captain. Oh, what? I'm boss inside the walls of this hospital. And this girl is in no physical condition to stand your third degree. Besides, I think she's telling the truth. The truth? Why not? We can't call a thing a lie simply because we don't understand it. Have you any better explanation than we've heard for the tragedy at those old crossroads? You don't think anything supernatural? I think something that has lived beyond the span of ordinary human life is responsible. Remember those almost forgotten cases the newspapers have searched out? The man who was stabbed there in 1865? That other chap in the early 1900s? One of the reporters told me they'd discovered several more crossroad stabbings in the records. A peace officer was still there in Andy Jackson's time. And a member of the watch was stabbed when uh, Washington was president. All policemen. By Jove. I hadn't thought of it just in that light. Uh, Miss Fallon, you say the phantom woman had a rope round her neck? Yes, a thick rope tied with a heavy knot. A hangman's rope. And at the crossroads in the early days, criminals were hanged and buried. What's that got to do with it? Maybe a lot more than you think. Excuse me, Captain. Move the chair aside so that I can get to that bookcase. What? I want to find something. Something I've read in more than half a dozen. Mm. Policemen, officers of the law, they've been the only ones to die at those crossroads where a gallows tree once stood. Oh, that's a coincidence. Ah, but you must admit a strange coincidence. Ah, here's the book. I know the history of this county. History? Hmm. Here it is. I knew I read it somewhere. Look. What is it, Doctor? I'll read it to you. Listen. On that 13th day of August, 1721, by order of the King's Governor, a gibbet of good stout oak had been erected at Berkeley Crossroads. That's the old name of our place, Captain Elton. Go on, reading. And there the criminal, Goody Fairfax, was taken, still protesting her innocence of the foul crimes of the jury procured. Hey, you're 
had a fair trial. Shame and be found guilty. Yeah. And soon be a crime. You'll be buried in the soil of infamy. Here beneath this gallows tree. Yeah. Hey! Hey! Oh, you pass me. Hit upon your grave. Yeah. I'm not so bad as I won't. Ah, the rope's fast at last. All is ready, my lord, Jerry. When you give the word. Hey! Yeah. 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 Quiet! Yeah. Quiet! Yeah. Our law of the king, I shall speak. Nay, I who am about to die this unjust death will speak. Hear me, ye officers of so-called justice, who have decreed this fate for me. As I die innocent of crime, I vow to return from death the murderer you do hang me for. As ye officers of blind law do visit death on me, so I shall visit death on you with no more sense of right or pity. You mean to bury me beneath this gibbet in unhallowed ground, away from God. Whilst I remain away from God, beware. Beware, I warn ye, for not even death will stay my hate. I shall return to bring ye death, ye officers of law. Uh, Captain Elton, whether or not you believe in ghosts, it might be a kindly thing to search for Goody Fairfax's grave, and if you find it, to place her restless bones in hallowed ground. A kindly thing and a wise thing. <laughs> Sergeant Stripe. Sergeant Stripe? Yeah, here's your warrant. Oh, Captain Elton. I had to make you two crazy ghosts see some kind of a wedding present. And this didn't cost me anything. Oh, how could we ever thank you? Be happy. Uh, and Kathleen, let that first shot you had at your husband be the last. <laughs> Satan. <laughs> you folks come see us again on my birthday. We'll have another cheerful yarn to sing. 